Hiya. In this video I'm going to talk to you about a tool that is really important in wildlife photography and in a lot of other styles of photography as well and that's the histogram. Now before I can talk to you about the histogram I need to cover a couple of more things first and that is one is the file that you're going to be shooting in. We're going to either be shooting in JPEG or RAW and I'll explain to you the difference as we go along today. Right, there's a signet that's fell down into this trough and it can't get out. I don't know what, what's going to happen if I whistle it. It's not. I've not drained it yet, have I? Right, has it gone through now? I'll wait for the other side. See, my whistling did work. Yeah, it Oh, so. so apparently that big swan there, the one over the right, that was attacking this. But this is the mother, this is possibly the mother now, yeah. Well he's on his way, so I'll hang on a minute. Who's this? Who we got here? Who's this? I think that'll be its last adventure, do you? So here we are then, finally, baby reunited with mum. And I just got some rather muddy boots. So the problem I had was this was the other side of that gully where the signet had fell through. So obviously I couldn't get through those. Those are about a foot in diameter. There's five um, holes there. So I basically whistled and uh, everybody laughed, but it actually ended up coming through. So I managed to sort of get down there amongst all, amongst all the mud. So I managed to get down there amongst all the mud. It came, it came out there, went up to there. Unfortunately, there's a big boulder. There's a big boulder there where he couldn't get any further. So um, 
I was able to get him. Good news for baby. So this is where the signet had fallen and obviously the mother couldn't get through to it and that is about four and a half foot deep and it was stuck in there and it was stuck right down there as you can see those are the little pipes and they're about a foot in diameter but fortunately it went through and we was able to save it happy days and hopefully you can see mum with the youngster happy now what had actually happened is over there there is two swans with one signet and one of the swans I think it was the male came over this side of the lake and tried attacking the signet with the mum over here and that's why the signet basically got out of the water to go alongside this uh, railing and unfortunately it fell in so eventually the male went back over to um, the female with the one signet and then I was able to reintroduce mum and baby over here and now it's as though nothing's happened I dare say that won't be its last adventure Okay, well, that was a bit adventurous. Um, I came down here to talk to you about histograms and uh, ended up rescuing a signet. So you never know with wildlife photography. It's great, isn't it? Right, so I was talking about that we need to learn all about, first of all, the memory cards, the files that you use. Now, every digital camera uses a JPEG file and the reason it's called a JPEG is because that's the name for something that's compressed that file has been compressed now the only thing with compressed files is that when you go to the computer to process them there's not a lot of manipulation that you can do and when I say manipulation what I mean is the contrast the light the, 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 the exposure and things like that you can just alter a little bit now because it's wildlife photography you're going to be up against all sorts of lights you're going to be dark it's going to be light it's going to be shadow it's going to be heavily contrasted so you do need that form of adjustment and what you do is a lot of digital cameras have got something called raw mode a raw file so what a raw file is that's a file that is like basically like a negative it's it's got all the information that you've captured and it's not been compressed so when you actually put it in for processing into your computer you have to have a raw converter which is built in when in a lot of the software for processing but basically what you can do is you can adjust more of the light, more of the contrast, you can do the saturation, you can do the sharpening. So think about what you've got. Now with the raw files, you can go large, medium and small. Yeah. Now the thing is with the JPEG one, you'll be tempted with that one. And at first they're fine, but you'll be tempted with the JPEG one because you'll get more shots on a memory card. Whereas when you start shooting with raw, you're going to have to buy bigger memory cards because they're a bigger file and you're probably going to have to buy a big um, external hard drive to be able to put them on because if not they're going to fill your computer up quite quick. So at this stage whichever you decide to go with be it a JPEG or a RAW file it'll still be important for you to understand the histogram. So I'm going to cover the histogram but I'm going to do that back in the office and I'll do that in more detail. Hi. Well, I'm back in the office now. First thing I'm going to talk about is pixels. Now, on the old fashioned cameras, well, old fashioned now, the film camera, it was replaced by a sensor and a digital camera. And that sensor is actually made up of things called pixels. And depending on what you've spent on your camera and the size of the camera, will determine how many pixels you'll get across that sensor. You might get an 8 megapixel, you get a 12 megapixel, you'll get 
20 megapixels, they even go up to like 60 megapixels now. And that's all the pixels that's along that sensor. Now, if you remember, when we was at school, we used to do something called a bar chart. And that bar chart was something that could literally give you a graph of any subject whatsoever. So that's, you know, how many sausages do you eat in a year? And what you would do on the left hand side, you would go the numbers of sausages, and then you'd go January, February, March, and you'd have these blocks, and you'd have these bar charts, and you would plot everything down, and at the end of it, you would have this uh, bar chart to look at. Now, that chart there was actually called a histogram, and digital cameras, they all have a built-in histogram. Now, a pixel is a device that receives light, whether it be bright light, dark light, whether it be mid-tones, that's the component that brings in light to the camera. Now, the way that the camera registers that light for you to observe is through a histogram. Now, the histogram, as you can see here, is made up of two scales, one going up and one going across. Now, the one that's going up is the number of pixels and the one going across is showing you the different lights that that's absorbed. So for example, on the left hand side, it shows you the dark pixels. On the right hand side, it shows you the white, the light pixels. And in the middle, it shows you mid-tones, sort of mid-grays. Now, if you take a picture and it's highly underexposed, all the pixels on that histogram are going to be over to the left. So that's underexposed. Now, if you overexpose it, all the pixels are going to be over to the right. And that's what's called blown out. It's going to be the, the, going to be the highlights are just going to be too much. And whether or not it's in the light side or whether it's in the dark side that information is now gone you can't recover that information so you need to be somewhere in the middle to get the correct exposure you'll notice that when i'm taking photographs i'm often having a quick look and i've taught you about this i a quick look at the back of the camera on the lcd display now you can't actually rely 100% on those uh, displays because the brightness on your display might be set wrong, uh, the ambient light might be on it, so it's just giving it a, a, a different look. So your histogram is the perfect guide. That is telling you exactly what it's there, what's happening with the light. This, the LCD on the back of the camera is very useful for composition so you know that you've got all of the subject in you can see that so that's a first that's a first glimpse there and of course if it is underexposed and it is dark you can see that you know you can see that so then you can make alterations but the thing that i'm always doing as well is i'm looking at my histogram to see whether or not i've got pixels right over to the right or right over to the left if they, and if they are, I will then adjust accordingly. It might be that the pixels are all blow, getting blown out, they're all too white, they're all going over to the white. So therefore, I'm getting too much light into the lens. So I've got to stop it down. I'm stopping it down with the aperture. So you might be going from something like 5.6 and you'd have to go to 7.1. So you're making the aperture smaller. And because you're making it smaller, you're stepping it down. And because you're doing that, you're letting less light in and therefore you'll notice that on the histogram the pixels will be coming over from the complete pure white side because pure white that's all the information lost it's no good to you so you're going to bring that in now one thing that's interesting is i've spoke to you about a jpeg file or a raw file i always shoot in raw file because as i said before you can then have some manipulation on the conditions of the light. With the JPEG, 
you don't get as much. Now, as you can remember in a previous video, I talked about the exposure triangle, yeah, which then gives you control of all the settings, but you know now that the information that you can be given on a picture, you know, the, the shutter speed, the f, sh f stop, the ISO, will be totally different for every shot that's taken. So that information to you really isn't much use unless you're looking for landscape. A landscape photographer gives you all his information because basically the only thing that's going to change slightly is a bit of the light. The composition's not going to change. So he will give you those figures so that you know then whether or not he's took it F8, F11, things like that. But with wildlife photography, there's no point in giving that information, like I said before, because the conditions, the, the landscape of the subject, behind in front and everything else it's completely different every time so that applies also for a histogram and you will get I mean, fabulous photographers out there and they'll tell you i always shoot to the right okay so they'll make it so the histogram will try and get it so that it goes to the to the right hand side which that with wildlife photography is wonderful but if that bird for example is sat in a conifer that ain't gonna happen you're not gonna get a histogram where it's all over to the right because your camera is gonna read the whole subject and it's gonna take into account and you'll see that whatever's out there so your, your subject will be light but all around it will be dark so therefore you'll get this big peak to the left on the dark side and then you'll get some in the middle and then you'll get a little bit to the right where this what, what the subject is so you can't always just go to the right unless you're photographing let's say a bird on a stick with the sky as a background and then you can possibly do all that but it's never that simple when you're doing pure wildlife photography the circumstances change in an instant so that's why i can't turn around and say to you you've got to have everything over to the right, everything to the left, over to the middle. What you've got to do is you've got to make sure that you've not clipped the right hand side or the left hand side and you're going to be between those areas within that histogram. If you do that and you're looking at the back of your camera, still looking at the LCD, you can see the composition dry and you can see the light looks about right. So with the histogram at the side of it, you can then make sure you've not gone too far to the left and they're all dark or too far to the right and you've blown out the whites. And that is the beauty of a histogram. It's giving you that confidence and it's telling you exactly what information you have captured. So, you see what I mean? You can't have any set pattern for wildlife photography. Impossible. But what you can do is make sure that you've not overexposed that shot and you've not underexposed that shot. And that way, you're going to get a lot more keepers and you're going to be using the histogram as a tool to make sure that you've got the correct exposure.